Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. The Artifact, written by Allegoric. The Tolvari Armada dropped out of war, squadron after countless squadron, at its massive heart of the Exculptor, jagged and angular and stark. Their Sarider allies warped in alongside them, their bulbous, spherical swarms writhing in and out of formation. Then came the mighty Mosbur. The phalanxes of armored assault barges formed long, parallel ranks beside the others. The Cam and the Pero stood tentacle to mandible with them. Others too. The grandest fleet ever assembled. Tens of thousands of war vessels, dripping menace and death silhouetted against the beautiful glow of the dim red stars. A great alliance of the mightiest of races brought together in epic bloody campaigns of legions that had devastated entire systems and that historians were right about for millennia. All for this. They could see it now, the price that so much blood had been spilled to acquire. The artifact... Grand Overlord of the Protectorate of Infinite Sun Sekarak, he who was mentioned only in whispers. Lord of High Marshal of the Assembly of High Marshals, first Primus of the Legions of Blood, slammed down his fist in triumph, savoring the moment of glory. He called up the scans to gaze upon it one more time, the flickering displays illuminating the dim, steamy green of his command bridge. It hung in the void, a stupendous oval of grey metal, tens of sovereigns wide, broad enough to swallow a whole fleet. The region at its center shimmered and glowed a translucent blue and jagged yellow-white arcs of charge played across its outer structure, flickering amongst the nodes and bulges and antenna at the studded metallic ring. Wondrous! Technology, fantastical technology, a creation of the old ones, a device far beyond the wildest imaginations of the greatest minds. A portal. Soon it would be theirs, a bridge that could carry them anywhere they decide, beyond the mere few parsecs at a time that the tribes could manage, and then bring them home again when they were done. The whole galaxy. At their feet, rich, ripe, and exposed, theirs for the taking. He clenched his fist and laughed deeply. A trace, signals on the detectors. What was this? Ships at the portal. No doubt, deeving interlopers trying to salvage a few treasures and preparing to make a run for it. Such impudence would not be allowed. Such larceny could not be tolerated. His minions fine-tuned their arrays, focusing in and analyzing the data and feeding it up into his displays. There were five of them, little buds of things, tiny grey dots, compact, one crew each, streamlined and winged for atmospheric flight, dotted with clusters of thrusters for vacuum maneuvering, narrow projections jutting out from tiny surfaces. Pitiful. <laughs> Pitiful. Turn them to dust, he ordered. Mud minions. He called us mud minions. The linguistic database struggled with that one. Got it in the end, though. Earthlings. Jago's laughter for the concept. <laughs> Earthlings. So, I said, uh, is there a, like, a, a time rift to the 1950s or something? You want me to take you to my leader? So I pulled it out, and I showed him. Should have seen the look on his face. That's humans to you, laughing boy, I told him. Humans! Sniggers and laughter. Your damn college stories, Blue Four, said Lieutenant Poole, 
She waited until the snickering had died down. Okay, all adults again. Good. I've run scans and it looks like they're mostly using standard stuff. Though, they've optimized a lot of systems. Electron-bounded hulls, matter disruptors, plasma force incinerators, repulsor vortexes, multi-phasic targeting. They're up to type 4 shielding too. Bioplasmic relays, integrated command and control. Got that? Yes. They answered in bored tones, almost as one. Poole checked each razor in turn. Standard procedure. A diagnostic appearing along with a few external views of each craft. All weapons primed, all systems optimal. Blue 2, I thought I told you to get that thing cleaned, she scolded, looking at the stains on the hull. Jonesy mumbled something back. Probably best that she couldn't make it out. Okay, patent Alta 3, prepare to engage. 3, 2, um, wait, what? The exasperation in the lieutenant's voice was plain to hear. Squeezed out too much nutrition paste. Ew, it's on the panel. Give me a moment, just wiping the projector. Some scrunching noises, then ready. The lieutenant closed her eyes and took a deep, calming breath. Are you done, Blue 3? A pause, no answer. She swore she could hear chewing. Breathe again. Good. Prepare to engage. Three, two, one, engage. The little craft streaked away from the gargantuan structure. A cloud of starfighters, sleek, purposeful, and malicious, thousands upon thousands of them surged forward, accelerating away from the Yamada on pillar of flames. They closed the range, and those at the fore of the tide engaged the razors, locking onto their targets and weaving and firing as they fell upon them. The bulk of the horde fixed their navigators onto the huge and awesome relic, each competing with each other to see who would be first to the artifact, to be the one to claim the honor of its capture. Good, good, crowed the Grand Overlord, rubbing his talons together as he surveyed these scans. In the briefest of flashes, those starfighters at the fall were gone. No trace remaining. The five grey specks sped on. The flight leaders directed more of their groups to deal with the threat. Hundreds of starfighters engaged. The five grey tracers span and spiraled amid the swirling mass of fire and flashes of fury. And then, nothing. The starfighters had ceased to exist. But still, the five little crafts pushed on. Enough foolery, roared the commanders. Enough play. They would be taught a lesson. Each one of the massive starfighters launched a swarm of missiles, then together turned the detector displays a solid sheet of green white, and then they began blasting their main phases too. Code words and commands from their formations piled in as they swooped and unleashed deadly attacks. The incoming fire connected. Blast after devastating blast and shock after devastating shock, tearing and ripping and shielding and protection. A flash, a dazzling in its intensity, dimming, then growing into a malevolent glowing sphere as wide as a planet. Another a little way off, then another, and another further back, and finally another. They are dealt with. Let the demise be a warning to others. The Grand Overlord broadcast to the assembling throng. The five senses' blinding blasts faded and dimmed. He waited for a few moments more for the reports to filter back in. Nothing. No communication. No updates. Just crackling static. He brought the scans up on his display. The starfighters were gone. All of them. A constellation of irradiated fragments glittered in the void where they had been. The detector sensed five little grey specks surging forward towards the Amada. A rain of directed beams fell upon the lone razor as a cloud of battle spheres surrounded its position. The little craft vanished into a glowing, iridescent ball of energy that flickered between deep red and bright yellow and a ghostly blue. The comma crackled. Oh my god, Sam! Hold position! Hold position! What? Why? The pitted and scarred battle spheres clustered inward, crowding their tiny foe and colliding with one another 
as they jostled to bring their weapons to bear. In their midst, three slowed its movement and wove and spiraled and jinked. Um, Blue Five, uh, my shielding is good, but I can just sit here all day. Uh, you want to clue me in? Uh, maneuvering to your position, replied Mouse. Almost there. A battle sphere erupted, caught by the fire of other vessels behind it. The shockwave and debris smashed into other nearby craft. The glare of that center of their aim flickered through the shades of electric blue and into the ultraviolet. Concussions and ripples played through it, and rolls of energy rolled and sparkled off its surface. Mouse, are you looking to burn out my thermal sink? Just a few more moments. Mouse? There! Oh, the colors are so pretty. That's gonna be a lovely picture. Sam sighed, shook her head, then set her inversion matrices. The lattice work activated, and one by one the battle sphere crumpled, collapsed, and then exploded into clouds of shards and atoms. Blue Leader, this is Gold Leader. We're beginning our attack run. Lieutenant Poole glanced at a data display. Gold Leader? What the hell are you on about now? Blue Four was racing down towards the mighty Talvari battlecruiser. The bulbous nose, armored hull, and bulky drive pods were studded with turrets that rippled with flashes of fire as they tracked and targeted the incoming razor. Its escorting destroyers, barbets, bristling with barrels and swirling amongst the jagged armored plates, frantically maneuvered to get into a better defensive position. Blasts of energy played out, flashing round and enveloping the little craft in the incandescent wrath. I got a problem here. Here I go. More batteries locked and poured fire onto the pluming vessel. The destroyers were within range now and blasting away with everything they had. I can hold it! Jago? No, I'm alright. A massive white blast and a vast scatter of debris erupted as the razor smashed into the upper hull of the battlecruiser. The defensive fire slowed. Radio static. Silence. Blue fall. A vast cloud of debris blasted out from the belly of the huge warship. One of the dry pods began flickering on and off sporadically, sending the battlecruiser into a slow, lazy tumble. The turrets and batteries on the wounded vessel and its escorts opened up again in a frenzy of fire. The communicator crackled again. Did you get it? asked Jago. Reality seemed to bend around the doomed battlecruiser as the implosion charges he had dropped within its heart detonated twisting and shredding it and dragging its structure into the short-lived singularities they created. Yet what? A flash as bright as a star erupted from within the warship, spreading out in an expanding sphere to engulf the destroyers that surrounded it, their shields flickering in the spectrum as they overloaded and then a brief brighter glows showed within the expanding globe of energy as the hulls were torn to molecules. The quote from a movie, an old one, but a classic. You know, the series where they made four before they made one. The grey blips wove and dodged and swooped, diving in into the foes and blasting them into so much wreckage. Cruisers adrift with their backs broken, frigates turned inside out, battleships and carriers mangled into twisted multed knots of girders. Transports and barges ripped apart, destroyers and patrol craft and freighters reduced to flecks of metal. All met the same fate, smashed and torn and blown to fragments. We cannot permit this device to fall into their hands, raged the Grand Overlord. It would be a crime for them to possess the mysteries, the awesome power of the Ancient Ones. If we cannot have it... Then we shall deny them. He leaned forward over his tactical table, focusing on the five soft grey blips that were displaying on it. The Sarida was smashed, the Musbu swept away, the others too. Shattered wreckage and clouds of hot gases, their only markers. Only the huddled core of his own force remained, and the carapace ships of the Perra too, far out on the fringe of the system. The sniveling cowards had stood off, watching to see how things transpired from the start of the battle. Four of the grey blips retreated to positions close to the artifact, while one surged forward at an incredible velocity, zapping past the remnants of the armada, 
towards the bug flutillas of the Pero. He felt certain satisfaction that they would soon feel the pain that his more loyal allies had suffered. One by one, the sleek segmented Pero vessels turned and fled, rotating at maximum speed and selecting any vector that they could find in their frantic haste to warp out. The single grey boat slowed, making no effort to intercept their honorless squadrons as they scuttled away. He had been abandoned. The Grand Overlord bellowed to his ancestors at the injustice of it. So be it. His demise would be glorious. The Talvari would speak of this moment for generations to come. Set a collision course for the artifact, he shouted. He felt the trembling through the deck plates as the engines of the Exculpator came on and it oh so slowly began to accelerate. Its remaining escort of storm cruisers and armed frigates formed a defensive cloud around it, interlocking and overlapping their shields to protect the huge charge. Fire everything! Every last piece of ordnance! The single grey blip at the aft slowed, halted its progress, and rotated, it, pointing its nose towards the distant artifact. In an instant, it went from a matched vector to a blur that his detectors could barely sense. The sculptor shuddered heavily. There were five grey blips at the gigantic relic. The massive core ship began to roll. A hole ran right through it, half the sovereign wide. A perfectly cylindrical warp tunnel punched through from the stern to bow. The shredded drives and power plants began to erupt, fading and exploding and setting off chain reactions among stored munitions and powered equipment. Zakarak's last perception was the command deck's display screen, melting and bending but still showing his outgoing fire targeted onto the great ring. But his final blows were striking an invisible barrier, a wall of force, seemingly anchored on the five grey specks that lay between his position and the artifact. It was utterly undamaged. No! The gore ship exploded consuming its clustered escorts in a tumult of destruction. He roared at the deities in frustration and rage as his command bridge erupted in a disintegrating subatomic fury. The razors held their position in front of the portal. Blue two, what are you doing? asked the lieutenant. I said defensive crit, not a full speed at the creepy crawlies. Jonesy mumbled something unintelligible. It was probably best that she couldn't hear him. They watched as a few battered survivors of the Grand Armada limped into war, fleeing as fast as the drives could carry them. They let them go. There was no point in being malicious. They weren't attacking. They were carrying with them the tales of what had transpired. Jago peered out of the Razor's cockpit window at the gigantic portal hanging in the void. Lieutenant, uh, he asked, do you think they know that we built this antique piece of junk? End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.